Well, I hadn't planned on making another video this year, but there was a few really interesting things that were recently released. And since a lot of people have downtime between Christmas and New Year's, I thought I'd show off some of the news and cool tools that you could maybe try out in some of your downtime. Starting with the fact that in the last week, Leonardo AI released Leonardo Motion, their new text to video and image to video pipeline inside of Leonardo. They say it is now available to all users, both paid and free. And if you're on their top plan, you actually get unlimited video generations. So let's go ahead and check this one out. If I go to app.leonardo.ai, the first thing I get is this introducing motion pop-up box. So let's go ahead and take a peek here. We get a quick little tutorial on how to use it. If I click got it, you can see I now have a new box up at the top that says motion. Now, if I want to create a video, the way I would do it is I would either create a new image, pick an image from the community feed, or pick one of my previously generated images and animate that. So let's go ahead and hover over our Spider-Man versus Batman playing chess here, and you'll notice there's a couple new buttons here. We've got the alchemy upscaler, and we've got the generate motion video. Let's go ahead and click on generate motion video. We've got a motion strength slider here that goes from zero to 10 that defaults to five. And we can choose whether we want our visibility to be private or public. It uses 25 of our tokens to generate and let's go ahead and see what we get. And here's the video we get. Spider-Man's hand kind of looks like it's morphing a little bit, but not too bad. I mean, pretty close to what we'd expect from some of the other generators. We can download an MP4 here, or we can create a brand new video by giving it a text prompt, like a race car drifting on a dirt track. We get our starting image, but then we can also generate a motion video from our starting image. Let's go ahead and boost the motion scale up quite a bit on this one and see how it affects things. And here's the video of our car drifting around a dirt track. Not too bad. If you happen to be scrolling through the Leonardo recent creation feed here and you really like one of the images and you wanna animate it, you can click on the image you want animated and we've got an image to motion option here. We can just click that, generate our motion. We'll get a little pop-up here. If I click on view generation, it will jump me to my generations page where I can see that it is currently animating the image that I just found. So it doesn't even have to be your own images that you animate. And here's what that one looks like. Probably my favorite animation I've made so far with Leonardo, that's pretty cool. Now, speaking of AI video, I've made a few videos about Pika Labs 1.0. I've had to point you to the Discord in order to use Pika Labs because Pika 1.0 wasn't quite ready for the general public yet. Well, as of this week, you can now also use Pika 1.0. Simply navigate to pika.art, log in, you can explore the user feed of all the other videos that people have made, or come down to the bottom and prompt your own AI video, either by starting with a image or video, or just giving it a text prompt. And then you have all of the options like aspect ratio, your frames per second, your camera movements, pan, tilt, rotate, zoom, the strength of the motion, and then you've got negative prompts. And if there's a seed that you really liked in the past and you wanna reuse it, you can plug that in here. And then you have a slider for consistency with text. And you can come in here and start generating your own AI videos like you've watched me do in the past with really cool in-painting video features, as well as really cool out-painting features like this one where I turned a horizontal video of a wolf into a vertical video of a wolf. So I made a video about this in the past. You can see it right there. And I deep dive into all of the various features of this tool. So everything I talked about in this video is still relevant. It's just everybody has access now. And since we're on the topic of AI video in a recent Midjourney office hours, they did mention that they are starting to train their video models with Midjourney in January. So pretty soon we'll be able to generate videos off of Midjourney images directly as well. So something to look forward to in early next year. Now back on the topic of things that you can play with right now, Microsoft Copilot now has its own Android app. So if you're an Android user, and you want a nice web connected AI chat app that you can use directly on your Android phone, maybe Copilot is worth a shot because it's now available on Android. And since we're on the topic of Copilot, 
Last week, I mentioned that we got Suno AI inside of Microsoft Copilot now, but it hadn't rolled out into my account. However, it looks like it should be in most accounts now. If you go to copilot.microsoft.com up at the top, make sure next to recent activity, you click on plugins and you enable the Suno plugin. And when you enable the Suno plugin, you should be able to make a song. You can see I actually have a button here that says, make a song with Suno. If I click on that, it generated a random prompt for me, make a pop song about a seahorse named Bubbles. And then it goes on to start creating the song for me. While I'm waiting for it to create the song, it's actually giving me some fun facts, like seahorses are fish, but they don't have scales. They have bony plates under their skin that protect them from predators, etc. So now I'm not just mindlessly sitting here waiting, I actually get to learn about seahorses while I'm waiting for it to generate the song for me. Now, if I scroll up here, we can see we've got our song, Underwater Adventures, and I just gotta press this to listen back. It actually generated the song 58 seconds long, which in the past, Suno only generated about 30-ish seconds. So this newer version of Suno is actually better than what we were getting inside of the Discord. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit to the chorus. So there you go. You can uh, spend your time this week making songs with Sudo directly inside of Microsoft Copilot. And while we're on the topic of Microsoft, if you're a coder, GitHub Copilot chat is now generally available for organizations and individuals. I haven't been doing much coding lately, but if this is something that interests you, you should have access to GitHub Copilot directly inside of Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio. Now, the other big news that came out this week outside of all of the cool video and music stuff that you can now do is that, well, New York Times is suing OpenAI. Seems like somebody's always suing OpenAI. The timing on this one's just very, very interesting because last week we talked about how Axel Springer was partnering with OpenAI to get news from Axel Springer directly into the training data. And then fairly soon after that, the New York Times sues. The most damning evidence for this one is that the output from GPT-4 was almost identical to the actual text from the New York Times. So you can see here, everything in red is the stuff that GPT-4 said that was taken directly from the New York Times article. So New York Times is basically claiming that ChatGPT is repeating their content verbatim and you don't actually need New York Times if this repeats it verbatim. However, if we really looked at how it was prompted, there's a great article here on Tech Dirt that sort of breaks it down. And the way they prompted it was they gave GPT-4 the URL of the story and then prompted it by giving it the headline of the article and the first seven and a half paragraphs of the article and then asking it to continue. So they didn't just say, hey, tell me what was in this New York Times article and then it repeated it verbatim. No, they went in and prompted the URL of the article, copied and pasted a bunch of the article in and then said, continue this article. So who knows if this was actual data that was saved and inside of all the training data or if it just scraped it and looked at it in the moment that it was asked to look at it. So this lawsuit seems kind of shaky, but a lot of people have pointed out that it's the most legitimate one against OpenAI so far. In my opinion, I think we're actually going to see the end of copyright pretty soon here. Like everything needs to change the way copyright is handled needs to change because the world is changing and we're trying to fit the way we used to do things into the new way that things are about to happen. And copyright just feels like this sort of antiquated concept that is going to need to get fixed and changed and reworked. I do want creators to get compensated. I'm a creator, so copyright does affect me as well. I think a solution needs to be come to that works for everybody. We just can't keep on using the old ways of figuring this stuff out in a new world that's completely technologically different. But I'm sure we'll be talking about this story more in future news videos as more of this actually unfolds. This week, Samsung unveiled a new AI-enabled smart fridge. 
that can design recipes based on your dietary needs. This is gonna be unveiled at CES next year, which I will be at CES. I'm going to make a handful of videos breaking down some of the coolest stuff that I come across at CES. This might be a gadget that I come across and actually make some video content around while I'm at CES. We'll just have to wait and see. But basically this Samsung fridge has AI features, including an internal camera that can identify individual food items and a connected app that can suggest recipes based on what you have in stock. This writer buddy website put out some research on the 50 most visited AI tools and their traffic behavior. I'm not gonna get into this whole article, but I will link it up below in case you're really interested in what some of the top AI sites were this year. But you can see from this giant graph here that ChatGPT was the biggest, followed by Character AI. We can take a peek at our top 10 here. Number one being ChatGPT, number two being Character AI, Willbot, Midjourney, Hugging Face, Bard, Novel AI, CapCut, Janitor AI, that's one I haven't even really played with yet, and CivitAI.com rounding out the top 10. And of course, Leonardo AI, a tool we just got done talking about falling in the 18th spot here. Again, I will link this up below. It's a pretty in-depth article that breaks down all of these tools and what they do and they share a handful of key takeaways based on this information. And if you wanna see all of the coolest AI tools that I come across, check out futuretools.io. This is where I curate all of the coolest tools I come across. I add new ones on pretty much a daily basis. I keep the AI news page up to date on a daily basis. And I also have a free newsletter where I will share just a handful of coolest tools and the most important AI news articles from the week with you directly in your inbox. You can find it all over at futuretools.io. Thank you once again so much for tuning into this channel, for subscribing, for liking my videos. We passed that 500,000 mark literally the day after Christmas, and I am so grateful. I will be giving away five pairs of the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. I'll be announcing winners in a future video, so stay tuned for that. It will probably be a video that comes out next week, and we will also make sure the announcement is made in the Discord and on the newsletter. So ideally, wherever you're paying attention, I will <laughs> let you know that you won those glasses. Thank you so much for helping me get to that half a million milestone. Now I'm shooting for a million. I'll do something even cooler, even bigger, maybe give away some Apple Vision Pro or something really, really cool for hitting a million subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna be doing more giveaways. I'm gonna be sharing more AI news, more AI tutorials keeping you in the loop. I did my best to break down all of the latest AI news, tools, trends, tutorials for 2023. And I plan on doing the same thing in 2024, just up in the production quality and trying to make even better videos for you. So excited for the new year. Happy new year to everybody watching. Thank you once again for tuning in and I will see you in the next video, most likely next year.